Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate confidence intervals for a correlation in SPSS. Uh, now, the truth is that there's actually not a direct way of calculating confidence intervals uh, for correlations in SPSS. You kind of have to trick SPSS into doing so through the regression utility rather than the Pearson correlation utility. Let me show you what I mean. If you just calculate a correlation, correlate bivariate between these two variables which are stress and symptoms and I'm expecting a positive correlation the more stress people have the more symptoms uh, physical symptoms uh, they're going to manifest in the future and we can see that there's a correlation here of 0.525 between stress and symptoms and there's simply no option there are no options in the correlate uh, utility with SPSS. If you click on options, it gives you means and standard deviations and cross product deviations and covariances. It doesn't give you any options to actually calculate um, confidence intervals. It just gives you the uh, statistical significance level, which here is p less than 0 0.001. Now, to calculate some confidence intervals for um, in SPSS, and it's an indirect way, but it's still a way to do it, uh, is to use the regression utility. Let me show you what I mean. If you go into regression and you click on linear and you regress symptoms onto stress and then you click on statistics, there's actually an option here, confidence intervals. So I'm going to click on confidence intervals and the level is 95%. All right, I'm going to click OK, or continue, and I'm going to click OK. And what SPSS is going to do is it's going to give the standardized beta weight, which in the case of linear regression is always going to equal the Pearson correlation. So the standardized beta weight is 0.525. Let me just move this over here, which is exactly the same as the Pearson correlation of 0.525, and that's totally expected. Uh, but SPSS also gives 95% confidence intervals, uh, and here it's 0.5425 and 1.0138. It's important to point out these are confidence intervals associated with the unstandardized beta weight. Those confidence interval lower bound, upper bound, correspond to this unstandardized beta weight, not to the standardized beta weight, which is the Pearson correlation. So how can we trick SPSS into calculate into calculating standardized uh, into calculating confidence intervals for the for the actual standardized beta weight well we can actually convert our stress and symptom variables into z scores all right so if i calculate z scores and this is the quickest way to do it save standardized values as variables that's going to calculate z scores for me in the output, see it's calculated Z stress and Z symptoms. That's one way and it's the quickest way to calculate Z scores. So now when I calculate the linear regression based on these Z scores, the unstandardized beta weight is now going to be a standardized beta weight. And so the confidence intervals associated with the regression analysis are actually going to be for the standardized um, or Pearson correlation. Whoops, I actually, that's a mistake there. I forgot to change my variables. I just redid it on the same variables. So now I'm going to do the analysis using stress as my predictor and symptoms as my dependent variable. See, th these are my Z scores, standardized scores. And I'm going to get 0.525 as my standardized beta weight. And now I've got an unstandardized beta weight of 0.525 as well, which means the 95% confident inter intervals on that um, correlation, this is all my Pearson correlations, uh, is now 0 0.360 and 0 0.689. So this is so that's the cor uh, Pearson correlation confident intervals, the lower bound and the upper bound for a correlation of 0.525, which I've tricked SPSS into calculating based on the standardized, unstandardized beta weight, which is really a standardized beta weight. Now, it would be great if that were the end of the story. The truth is, is that these standardized um, confidence intervals are an approximate estimate. They're not totally accurate. 
if you wanted uh, very accurate uh, st confidence intervals that you can get through SPSS, you actually would have to do it one way, would have to be doing it through AMOS. And I'm just going to quickly show you how to do this. I don't know if you, I don't have any tutorials on AMOS uh, yet, but this is how you would estimate the correlation in AMOS between stress and symptoms. You'd create a rectangle variable for stress, a rectangle variable for symptoms, and then you'd load up your data set here file name and I've got my stress and symptoms uh, data set and then I would go into analysis properties and I would click on the bootstrap tab, uh, tab and I'd cal calculate perform bootstrap and I'm going to calculate based on a thousand samples and I'm going to calculate it based on 95 percentile that's the 95th percentile confidence level that I want alright so I've clicked that option and now I'm going to click for the analysis to take place and SPSS does uh, the analyses, it's going to calculate it a thousand times. I click on my output. I'm doing this very quickly just to show you that the estimates are not actually totally accurate in SPSS. And the reason why I did this was uh, because it's, it is an approximate estimate, but if you read other people's websites where they say you can do this, they fail to mention that it's actually not quite totally accurate. So here is the output. Uh, it's 0.366 correlations lower upper 0.366 and 0.651 whereas SPSS told me the uh, upper bound was 0 0.689 and that's what happens the tendency is for SPSS is to to push out the confidence of intervals too far so based on AMOS where I did a bootstrap analysis which is a very valid way to calculate confidence intervals SP, uh, AMOS is telling me the lower and upper bounds are 0.37 and 0.65 rounded, but SPSS is more is to, uh, S, through regression is saying 0.36 and 0.69. So it is an approximate way, rough estimate. Yeah, it's a pretty good estimate, but it's not totally accurate. If you don't have access to AMOS to calculate really accurate confidence intervals, you should click on the link that I've got in the summary of this YouTube video where I send you to a spreadsheet on my website where all you have to do is enter your, co your correlation coefficient and your sample size and the spreadsheet automatic automatically calculates 90, 95th and 99th percentile lower and upper bounds for correlations. I hope you found this uh, video useful and I'll catch you next time.